Alright, so before the video starts, I just want to let you know that I do have a Patreon. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in seeing my full encore reactions and the full length reactions, the link to my Patreon is in the description, and you'll also be able to see the reactions a few days or like a week early. So yeah, uh, if you're interested in that, the link is in the description. But as for now, let's get straight into the reaction. Alright, so welcome back to the reaction on the channel. Today, we're going to be continuing the expanse and going on to season 2. I am so excited to get straight into the season. And yeah, last, well, last episode, last season was amazing i can't believe like i've got so much theories about what the hell that blue thing was what the hell that creature was that species and yeah i just can't wait to get straight into this next episode like what the hell is gonna happen this episode we've got so much different storylines there's so much possible things happening and uh yeah i'm just really excited for that but yeah last episode obviously we had at the very end the spy who had obviously been left behind on the aero station poor guy uh pretty much everyone on that station is either dead or pretty much being tested on and uh yeah so he was just pretty much left there abandoned by the Rossiante, Rossiante crew and uh, yeah so we saw him and he was like kind of walking down I guess and then he went into this one place and it was like when he walked in it was like entirely blue like it was like what we've seen before with Julie like the entire blue stuff but it was like it's uh yeah it was like some sort of like infestation it was like a portal into this disgusting world and uh it's really interesting because obviously once he went there and he like entered this this alt i don't think it's an alternate reality i think it's like a portal into this species it's another alive species pretty much and uh yeah the spy went in there and then he looked around and uh, there was this blue creature like it literally looked like a human i was like morphing all around him like it was crazy and yeah that was really interesting because that thing that she kept moving around and the spy looked at it like what the hell is that i mean i was completely shocked when i watched that i was like i don't think i said a word the entire thing i was just in shock but yeah so at the end this weird ass tentacle thing literally went down and grabbed him and pulled him up like that and what well, obviously killed him but what the hell was that like what are we getting introduced to that is definitely going to be a major thing going forward this season next season all the show is going to be definitely affected by that creature whatever the hell that creature is but yeah i'm not quite sure if that actually arose from um uh we obviously saw i think his name was dresden i'm pretty sure his name was dresden we saw him like uh shining like this weird light onto julie obviously to keep no no it wasn't to keep it it's like because obviously the virus died out on julie because obviously she's dead and the virus can't survive but dresden activated this like weird it looks like a telescope pretty much and it was like shooting beams of maybe like um I don't know really, just radiation maybe? I don't know, but it's shooting beams or something, energy, to power up this virus. So I wonder if him doing that, that's what caused this entire thing to happen pretty much. That could be it, or it could just be all the people that was infected and them combined kind of created this weird like environment for this whatever species this is to arise and uh yeah create like a, a nest almost it's really disgusting but it's really really interesting but yeah it's really interesting as well because I, I picked up on something dresden the guy actually said that um it was like an incredible thing and that it comes alive or something like uh, i'm not quite sure what he said but i did look back on it and he said be careful or like he said something about like something amazing will happen if you t if it no it was like it doesn't transmit by air but if it if you touch it if you literally uh, get it on your finger on your body it will do something amazing and then he also said that julie mal is going to save them all so what the hell is it with that guy is he just crazy does he think that this is like an amazing cause and that they're gonna be the saviors of all the people on arrows all across the universe like what's that all about but yeah obviously uh, the title of episode 10 was called leviathan awake so does that mean now that they've awoken this creature this leviathan and uh yeah because obviously dresden did say that it is a creature and uh when he was talking to Pierre mal he was saying that uh we've done all the experiments we now need to let it let it learn no we need to let yeah it was like we need to let it learn or something uh no he didn't say that it was like we need to do something so we can let it learn and i was like what the hell is he talking about let it learn but obviously let it learn means to let this cr this creature whatever this is a species this leviathan let it adapt and find its footing pretty much and obviously we've seen that at aero station it's got its entire like nest now it's yeah, it's definitely a massive infestation of whatever it is. I was thinking, like, maybe it's a portal into the species. I mean, it still could be, but I just think it's taken over this entire place. I don't know how yet. I I can't predict how, because we saw it. It was like a massive thing. It was all blue. So, 
yeah, I don't know. It's really, really weird to think about and how that will actually affect us going forward. Like, because thinking about that, how did, does that have any... Well, obviously, does, does that have any relevance to uh, the Anubis 1A? Because, obviously, there was all that blue stuff on the Anubis 1A. And um, was that also part of this Leviathan or whatever the hell this thing is? Like, uh, yeah, I had some sort of idea that, obviously, in small pieces, like, so obviously, the Anubis 1A... That was just a small piece on the core, but once you have, like, all these alive subjects, so the people that they sacrificed, they can create, like, a massive portal, like, a massive species, and kind of combine them together, so I guess that's what's happened, but, yeah, I have no clue, really, that's just my predictions, my thoughts, uh, going into this crazy, crazy season, I can't wait to see what's gonna happen, last episode set up so much, well, no, the past two or three episodes set up so much, man, and I'm really excited to get straight into this, but yeah, I'm really interested to see what's gonna happen with Rossinate, because obviously now they've completely left the arrows, I'm pretty sure they're actually the only ones that actually managed to survive the arrow station, so, yeah, that's gonna be real interesting, because now James Holden and their crew, the Rossinate crew, like Alex, Naomi, Amos, they've survived, the Canterbury being exploded, the Donoghue, well not the, the, I keep saying, I keep saying the Donoghue, but it's the Donoghue, the Donoghue being self-destructed, and now, all the shit at the aero station, like, it's crazy how much James Holton and his crew has survived. Like, that is just the most insane look, obviously, I mean, obviously the main characters, but still, that is just unfathomable, unfathomable, I can't say that word, but it's crazy. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really interesting now to see what's going to happen on the Rossinate because Amos literally killed Miller's best friend last episode, just like that, because uh, that was a really, really good scene. I can't believe that happened, but uh, pretty much Miller's friend, I think his name was Sam, or it's Sam something, but um, yeah, that guy pretty much said to Naomi, we got to go, let's just go, I'll give you the codes, and Naomi was like, nah, we're waiting for James and Miller, that's what we're doing. And, uh, yeah, he was like, Miller's my friend as well, but we gotta go, we gotta get the hell out of there, but, yeah, obviously he pulled a gun on Naomi, and it was like, we're going, whether you like it or not, so, Amos going to controls, and I was like, Amos, you really just gonna let, um, let this guy just threaten Naomi like that, after everything you and Naomi have been through, and, uh, yeah, I really thought Amos had lost all his faith, all his, like, devotion to Naomi, uh, but then he literally out of nowhere got a gun and shot Miller's friend, and, uh, yeah, at that time, I didn't know what to think. I was like, oh, let's go, Amos. Let's go. I'm so happy he did that. But then I was like, Amos, you just shot Miller's friend. If Miller survives and comes, like, yeah, there's so much conflict and stuff there. And then um, Miller literally said, no, sorry, not Miller. Amos literally said when, uh, obviously, Miller and James got back onto the Rossinate and uh, Amos went with Miller to sit him down and put this, like, strap on or whatever to make sure he's all right and to help him with the radiation or whatnot. He literally said, like, uh, Miller said, like, what happened to my friend? What happened to, to Sam over there? And uh, Amos was like, yeah, I shot him. <laughs> Just like that. Like, what, Amos? Uh, you probably should not have said that. But then again, that isn't Amos. That isn't Amos to lie. Amos is so upfront and uh, he doesn't really lie, does he? And I've heard amazing things about Amos' character. Apparently, he's one of the best fought out, like, badasses throughout television so i'm really excited to see his character develop and uh, to see what's happening with him but yeah i feel like there's definitely going to be conflict between amos and miller i really hope miller doesn't die but uh to be honest i don't know because i said last episode that miller would actually win against amos but amos is just on another level isn't he like we literally saw him carrying james and miller like on his back he was walking like this and he had both of them like what how is that humanly possible? Maybe it's not a human. Maybe it's an alien. <laughs> Obviously not. But yeah, it's crazy how strong he is and how, um, what's the word? How well trained he is. Like he is like so well trained, so strong and so disciplined. It's really interesting his character. So I hope going into this season, we find out loads more about Amos. I really hope that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what's next. What What is next for the Rossinate? What's next for Christian? And um I think that guy's name was Savadir. I'm not quite sure, but obviously the UN guy who is in cahoots with Pierre Mao. I completely forgot to mention that. Um, Pierre Mao is the guy in charge. He's behind everything. Pierre Mao is the guy who did all the bio stuff on Aero Station. He is Julie Mao's father, obviously, and Julie Mao pretty much ran away to get away from him. It makes it makes so much sense now, looking back at that, that Julie Mao tried to get away from her father because her father is crazy. And it's really cool because the character that plays her father is actually the guy from Lost. I can't quite remember his name, but he was in charge of the Dharma Initiative. And uh, yeah, he's a really mysterious and really good character in Lost. And I really, really did enjoy him. But yeah, all the stuff with the style ships and uh, the, the Canterbury being exploded, we we all saw that in the flashbacks episodes in episode 9. And uh, yeah, I guess that does have to do with Pierre Mao. Uh, I'm not quite sure though because it was the OPA, wasn't it? But the OPA and Anderson Dawes was doing that on behalf of Pierre Mao. So 
Yeah, PML is responsible for this entire thing. That is just crazy. And Miller was right. Miller's theories about there's a guy in power covering all this up. He start a war. That was right from the get-go. Miller is an absolute legend, man. That's one thing I need to mention. Go into the season, Miller better not die. If he dies, I'm going to be pissed with the show. I'm going to be so angry because Miller, I'm absolutely loving this character, man. And I really hope him and Amos don't get each other killed or he doesn't kill Amos or Amos doesn't kill him because uh, it's going to be really interesting to see that dynamic. But yeah, uh, especially the dynamic between Miller and James because that was really, that was a really, really fun episode. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. But yeah, I don't think there's anything else I want to mention. Uh, I actually haven't watched The Expanse in a few days. So it's going to be really good to refresh myself and get straight into the second season uh, i think the last time i watched one was probably about three four days ago so it has been quite a while but it's gonna be good now to get straight back into this and uh, to keep watching more and more and get more immersed into it again and yeah i just cannot wait uh, i need to thank everyone for the amazing support all my patreons all you legends man supporting me uh, it's honestly amazing thank you so much and all the people leaving me comments and all the support i just really do appreciate that so yeah thank you so much for that but yeah without further ado i, I think i'm gonna get straight into this episode so yeah this is gonna be the expanse season one no it's not it's not season one. Oh god i'm so used to saying season one man this is gonna be season two episode one of the expanse uh and uh yeah so hyped to get straight into this and yeah let's get straight into this okay so this episode is called save well, what the hell is going on here God. Yeah, you're dead. There's no way you're surviving that. <laughs> you're dead. Three tangles painted, Gunny. Four. Right, so this is Mars, but who the hell are they going up against? There's one more out there. Five targeted. That's all of them. Uh oh. Oh, that is sick. That is so sick. Oh my God. Yeah, don't fuck with Mars, mate. Three, that four, is awesome. Is six, one, two. Your best score is time by almost three minutes. Good work, Gunny. <laughs> nice. Return to drop. It's a very strange way to start the episode. Rumor is you're heading to Phoebe Station, so say your goodbyes and kiss your mommy. Phoebe Station. Trip. Wait, is this before the events of the show, the first season, or is this afterwards? So if, if this is before, then I might have a theory. Don't well, worry, Lee. yeah, it might be these people that. Will still be there when we get back. I'll catch up with you in a minute. Roger that, Gunny. Interesting way to start the episode. I'll give it all. Interesting way to start the second season. I'll give it that. I see a Mars. Obviously fighting some power. I don't know who that was, but. Okay. Interesting. So that's their prediction of what they want to build on Mars, obviously. But who is they fighting? Not quite sure about that. Probably missed something. I, I, knowing me, I probably did. What if it's the same intro? It looks like it, but sometimes they like to change it. I know that. I'm pretty sure it is a little bit different. I'm so happy to be watching the show again, man. I absolutely love it. Oh, shit. Okay, we've seen that. Is that Diego? <laughs> <laughs> Probably is the Jaeger, mate. He's still out there. God, I forgot about that guy. That guy has been floating for years and years. My God. That's definitely Diego. That means Diego. I think all of that shit in the intro, that plays a big role in the story. So Sorry, Diego and that Mars place you saw, that's the play a big, the big thing in the story. You're, you're doing bad, but you're not as bad as a spy. Stop beating yourself up. You made it. It's a dream, it's a dream. Don't worry, mate. It's a dream. It is a dream. Better be a dream. I was about to say, if that was real. <laughs> right, so the Rossinante is in the belt. Amos, is that you, pal? Or is that Alex? Sounds like Amos to me. Because you missed us. The days when we work on a core, just the two of us. Not having to say ten words together all day. Mate, Amos, I'd be careful if I was you. Lifetime ago, huh? What's all that blue shit in there? You Take wouldn't be careful. Easy. You know Amos' methodology is to shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> well, not really, but... 
He's not very. He does not very. Um, he does not finesse. That's the cryogen means whatever it was freezing is going to become. Oh, Android. for fuck's sake! Get off the ship Clean. right now. Truck it off. Clean as a whistle. Let's hope he doesn't hit Diego. <laughs> All right. Step right up. Traffic jam to Eros! Hey, give me that arm! I think maybe you want a spacer's. What do we test positive or not? Give him your arm and shut your mouth! Hey! Well, I'll space right. to myself! Nobody. And I really don't see all these people life. becoming main characters at all. So, yeah, they're, they're either gonna die or. Nothing more could have been well, Yeah, something's happened to him, obviously. Yeah, it's understandable though, really, isn't it? The way he's acting, because they've literally just lost everything at their home and now. Yeah. Alex is trying to do the right thing though, and I think that guy understands that. Wow. Yeah, so obviously they're gonna have to keep doing treatment now for um, the amount of radiation they absorbed, obviously. I'm Julie Mao went through the same shit. Don't blame you, mate. I never did say it, but thanks for getting me off arrow so wouldn't make Yeah, for that. saving your ass, mate. Thanks for the lift. Miller is a badass, and I mean, everyone in this crew knows yeah, now. Yeah, so I was thinking that it's like chemotherapy. What they're having right now, I guess. But Amos, mate, be careful. Oh, it's all the blue shit. I mean, is it even safe to truck away? Like. So you took it away, what if it attached to something? I want you oh, to be man. He cannot. My father taught me something. Never listen to what people say. Just watch what they do. That's a good line. Yeah, but obviously Hello? Christian knows that. Hello? Hello? Get out, get out, get out! I heard it! Fucking hell, I heard that. Get out there, there's a bomb coming, there's a bomb coming. That's what they said. Is that Mars? No, Mars is on this ship now. stations where it all started. These must be the Martians that Lopez told you about. They were infected on purpose. These are lab notes. The only way to see what it's evolving into is by feeding it a larger biomass. Oh, that's just about Eros. In making your decision, consider this. Phoebe was an extrasolar object. Trapped by Saturn's gravity eons ago. What if it were merely a delivery system? A way to send a protomolecule to our solar system? It begs the question sent by whom? And why? Oh, okay, so that was sent. Did he just say what I think he said? He said extrasolar object. First proof of extraterrestrial life. Yeah, That's what I thought it was. I thought it was like a, another universe, another advanced technology species that I've sent it to yeah, their universe. That's why I said, like, episode four, I, I don't know, before that. Yeah, of course. That's probably what it is. Tycho first. Cab's right. Nobody asks you, no, Nick. The proto molecule. What are we going to do with it? Yeah, I can Simple tell Amos is going to start getting pissed. Well, I mean, mate, you shot his best friend. Yeah, Shut up. <laughs> Hang on. I like Amos. What if there yeah. was a way to use that sample to create a vaccine? Hell no. Then we'll hide it. Where? Out here. No one knows we have it. No one even knows we made it off Eris alive. It'll be safe. There's an idea. Yeah, that's a good Take idea, Naomi. See if there's a good spot. Do a yeah, uh, do an Anderson oh, doors. Just hide it in a bloody asteroid. Alex. Yeah, what I was saying is, obviously the style ships, it's linked to Earth and. Uh, that UN guy and Pier Mao, that, all of that stuff is obviously Pier Mao and the corrupt UN guy. But this blue stuff, this bio stuff, I think that is an alternate universe. And not alternate, another universe. I can't talk over this, but... Uh, what? Huh. Robot arm wrestle. You're gonna beat it? I mean, it's a robot, so I don't know. Oh, damn. She must be strong as hell. For them, because there isn't a team on the ship that doesn't want payback for the Donny. In any case, we will keep it business, not rumors. Aye, Lieutenant. Prep your teams. Dismissed. Really interesting how we're seeing the Got Mars you. side of it. Up here. Because up to this point, we've only seen the UN and the Earth side, and uh, obviously, like, series and all that. But 
We're seeing Mars' perspective and their, like, I know that you and your cruise. team were to Captain Yao was a friend, but still, nobody knows what really happened. We know Captain those stars Yao. were Earth-built. So says Fred Johnson. Because of Vesta, we pushed back the terraforming project. 50 years and 50 more. All those resources to the military now, none of us will live to see an atmosphere over Mars. That was the price. But it's still worth fighting for. Okay. That was the atmosphere that was shown at the start of this episode and in the credits, well, the intro. But yeah, that's, that's weird. Well, it's, it's not weird, but obviously that guy mentioned Captain Yao. Ship to Phoebe. I'm assuming there's nothing left to find there. Is there? Routine scrutiny would have passed muster. We need to talk about arrows. Mars and Earth may be busy pointing guns at each other, but those quarantine beacons won't keep people away from arrows forever. There's already a lot more do-gooders than we expected. Next will be the looters. Get rid of them. Yes, of course. I'll sacrifice what's left of my credibility for a few short-term trinkets. Putting the boot heel to your former colony. <laughs> this was Julie's spot. <laughs> Far from the house. Even losing her was worth it. She's a sacred part of it now. So don't talk to me about sacrifice. Ever again. Yeah, I already hate this guy. I fucking despise his character. This guy's as shady as hell. This will kill any cancer that dares try to grow inside you. Ow! How long are you to wear this? Rest of your day. Uh, I can't believe that oh, Pierre Mao is behind all that shit, man. Now you've managed without me. That's yeah, ridiculous. You've all been a wreck. The we'll fact that he out. said it was worth losing Julie for that, like, what a dickhead. That's your, you that's your door about. that died in, but no, way. it's all for the cause. Like, yeah, that guy's gonna get what's coming to him. Trust me on that. I wonder if Amos has apologized for killing his best friend yet. I, I presume not. If you and I have something we need to get sorted out, we should get through that. Yeah. We're here now. Your pal, Simi? You're upset about that, right? I had nothing against him. I thought he was a decent guy. Decent guy? Yeah. Do you think you would have got off Eros without him? No. Ah. Uh, but he wasn't a good enough friend to wait for you. No, no, no. Somebody was right. It was stupid to wait. But Naomi made the call. End of story for me. And when your pal pulled a gun, might as well have shot himself in right, the here, Here's what I see, okay? You seem kind of like a trigger happy whack job to me. So let me lay it on a table for you. All right? You shot my friend. I'll be admit on this. Like some street rat. If you need to square up, you know where I am. Otherwise, you should move on because you're poisoning the air. <laughs> That's what I mean there. Miller's not sad of trying to get Samus, does he? I'm with Miller on this day. Stay down, Miller. Amos! Amos! Yeah, stop. Amos. Stop, Amos. mate. Amos, stop! Amos! Stop here. I might have bias, but I'm pissed at I'm pissed at Amos for doing that, man. I'm on Miller's side, 100%, so Amos can fuck right off right now. I don't know, people are saying that Amos is a really good character, but after, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm on Miller's side for all of this shit right now. Come in. This is our fault. We put you in the crosshairs. Oh, so oh this guy has pissed me off so much. Listen, we're going to beef up your security detail. I'm oh, really? Really? Of fuck off. Intel says it was the Black Sky faction of the OPA. They caught wind of an assassination plot, an occupational hazard in my family. Time to go back. I want to read what Angel that said. That probably has good information on that. The they caught wind of an assassination. Okay, uh, Nikel K, faction leader of the OPA, Black Sky, connected to terrorist acts on series, um, acts attacks on series, Palace and Hygieia. Currently believed to be working on Tycho Station, known for sophisticated drone and infiltration exploits all right that's interesting so this guy's definitely gonna, gonna come up again so i just wanted to read that just so i know a little bit more about him i feel like that's that's definitely there for a reason so yeah let's continue i advise that we deploy our fleet to secure any base of course you want to do that for mr pierre mao and his fucking weapon madam 
Absolute moron. Do you concur? No, she doesn't, but she has to go along. Because this prick... Oh... I do. Obviously, Christian is still playing the part as the, the old woman who doesn't want to let go. But she knows, she knows really what is wrong. And, uh, yeah, that Savadir guy, he is wrong. Him and Pierre Mal, two buddies in crime. Yeah, I hope they get My found out. I mean, they will. They're going to get yeah. so much revenge taken out. Just, uh, Take it out on them from the Rusty Nazi crew. All my stuff here. He's just always needed someone to help him out with the world. And he picked you. Congrats. Yeah, I mean, I understand that about Amos, but he can't go around you choking know that Miller. Old story, Pinocchio. Oh. Yeah, his nose gets longer and longer. Let's hear the story, Naomi. Oh, I get it. Yeah, Miller's by far my favorite character, man. You can probably already tell if you watch my so previous already? reactions. The UN and Nathan Hale is on a direct course to Phoebe Station. When we accelerated, they matched. And now the Nathan Hale is burning us. At this rate, they're going to beat us there. Why would Earth suddenly care about Phoebe Station? Must be something there they don't want us to find. But command was unequivocal. Something Savadir no wants to find. Under are we to allow Phoebe to find She's got Who's a personal vendetta against Who's going to follow the sky and drink run. their rivers dry? Yes. Who's going to stop their mountains into fine Martian dust? Yes. If the rains fall hard on Olympus Mons, who are we? Yes. I can't hear you! Yes. Who are we? Yes. I do really like the character though, what we see. Even though she is the enemy, but she's not really. There's there's no enemies. There's no good guys. No bad guys. It's all perspective, and uh, this show's very sophisticated in that. So I've had lots of comments about that, which is absolutely true. You break the law and you don't get caught. You kept a scrapbook on me. Oh, don't flatter yourself. Who are the players? Pierre Mao and Savadier. Under Secretary and right. I assume I did. Do they suspect you? If they did, I'd be dead already. I don't have time to waste. I need a spy. Are you in or out? Come on, dude. Help her out. Nice, no, you will. Okay, right, yeah. Chris Shens will take him down. That That's what's gonna happen. That is so weird. Cool. That blue stuff, though. I hope that hasn't been irradiated out of you. What's sort of endearing? No. No, I don't think it has. So, that's gonna come loose, isn't it? That's gonna like break like or some shit. Gladiator movies. Can you hear me through the mask? Yeah. I can only imagine what you saw in errors. Or what it was like to nearly die that way. We did not choose this, but this is our fight now. We're the only ones who know what's going on down there. The only ones with a chance to stop it. Tell me that you're okay. You've put your lives in my hands. I'm okay. I hope so, man. I really do. <laughs> I was gonna say something, but... I don't know. I mean, I'd be careful put it there because well yeah no one's really gonna find them are they unless there's another ship buried in there already nah it should be all right but you don't want that breaking free man alex be real careful man yeah for one minute then i thought amos and uh, not amos sorry james and naomi was together uh i don't know what to think about that i might be completely wrong or maybe we're gonna see that i don't know i guess we'll find out Right now. <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> I wasn't sure, but yeah, of course. I didn't want to say anything just in case I was completely wrong, but yeah, of course I'm right. I wonder what Amos thinks about this. Obviously, he doesn't know. UN Nathan Hale in route to Phoebe Station. Okay, so this is Nathan Hale, and that one is Mars. Okay, I wasn't quite sure, but. Why are we firing missiles? Commanders have forgot to check with us first, Private. Gang face is on. We still have our orders. Have to anticipate the worst. Phoebe's a backwater science station. 
What are they trying to protect? It doesn't matter. They're making a move. As we I speak, just the haven't right. are preparing a strike all over the system. Have any of their other ships changed course or launched or done anything provocative? Madam, by the time you see it on that display, it will be too I know how the fucking thing works. Answer my question. <laughs> yeah, don't... Don't As bullshit Chris out. No. That doesn't sound like a first strike to me. Exactly. Savadir just wants to provoke shit. Nothing more. Captain I think it's Aaron Hill, Wright Savadir. That's his name. Chiraco, as he's authorized. This thing to do right now is to target the MCRN fleet. Sure, mate. Mars is in sure, mate. To start a war that will end civilization over a rat hole like Phoebe. Aaron Wright is just trying to start a war. Over Pierre Mal's weapon. That's it, isn't it? Unbelievable. You never went to the academy. <laughs> That guy's catching on to Christian's bluffing. Not bluffing, it's more like lying for a good reason. Christian, you better be right though. I think you are, but. Yeah, you are Command. right. The Nathan Hale has not fired on the Scirocco. Their missiles were not intended for us. I repeat. Their missiles were not intended for us. Christian knew. You just had to put some Command, faith into her. Be advised. We are standing down. The Martians were targeting Phoebe Research Station, which sustained multiple direct hits. The ice moon oh. fractured under the barrage and the fragment spiraled into Saturn. It's completely gone. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, mate. What are you going to do now? Go create to... Create? Go cry to PML. Go on then, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know you're gonna pay that favor back. <laughs> Maybe give him proper burial somehow? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I feel bad for you, man. You're only trying to Alex? do the right thing, yeah. but. Yeah, you did friend Naomi. Okay. And Amos was kind of in the right for that, but you should have just knocked him out Listen, like that. You gotta love Alex, man. You have to love Alex. Viva. Lasagna? Yeah. Any real cheese or wheat or tomatoes or anything. Damn, Alex, you're getting us really excited about this lasagna. Don't go judging it before you taste it, Arthur. It's not bad, Marshall. Seriously, that's no, all you gotta say. Not, not bad. You know, real cheese. Clever. Real cheddar from real cows. Damn, they had cheese in the street for weeks. I remember that. Coming out of every nook and cranny, bricks of cheese. Makes you think about how grateful we are right now. Brotherhood for as long as that lasted, and then it was gone. I busted that cartel. Yeah, it's me and Star Helix. We confiscated about a thousand kilos of high grade cheddar. It's bound for some luxury spa and <laughs> Titan. Stuff is out of spot, too. Craziest thing, though. This whole shipment disappeared from the evidence lockup, that thing. Oh, it just vanished. Yeah, the um, security camera short now. <laughs> oh, God, Miller. Nobody saw nothing. These two are still not on good terms. Well, obviously, obviously not. What am I talking about? So the governor of Ceres gathers all the Star Helix cops together for an entire <laughs> terror. This guy wants to know. I fucking what is love money, man. Catching these dubious, nefarious <laughs> cheese thieves, right? <laughs> so he's there, he's daring us a new one. Meanwhile, the whole room stinks like cheese farts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I think I know that, Governor. <laughs> Teddy the Detector, this guy was not. <laughs> Teddy the Detector? Yeah, a merry little kid, the real robot, teaches you about the, uh, the air sensors, no? I right. think I'm too young. Teddy the Detector. <gasps> oh, God damn, that was great cheese. You're right. Alright, that was an amazing scene. I love that we're getting all these people together. All these people, all our crew, and we're actually becoming friends on good terms. And Amos, you can see, or Millie's Same trying to forgive shit, Amos, as we way, saw. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're, them two have the potential to become really good friends. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see if they actually do and uh, what happens surrounding that. Earth knows the price of escalation as well as we do. You said our job is to prevent a war with Earth. Ever wonder if we've got it backwards? The Maybe only people that you pissed off by doing that is PML and Aaron Wright. That's about it. So you don't have to worry about that unless PML wants to declare war on you. But you'd have to use Savitir and the rest of the UN aren't going to allow that just because 
Yeah, no way that's happening. It's interesting that their, their plans, Mars. What I wonder in future seasons, if we have like a time jump, like 100 years, 200 years, to see if this will be built. And obviously, the 100 year expedition. Oh, that's the end of the episode. All right, nice. That's a really good episode. All right, so yeah, that was my reaction to The Expanse, season one. Why do I keep saying that? It's season two, episode one. It's not, I was going to say season one, episode two, but it's season two, episode one. Uh, yeah, a really good episode. I really did enjoy that. And I'm loving the whole dynamic now. Because yeah, obviously we've got James Holden and Naomi together. That's really good. Uh, I mean, it was expected, to be honest. I mean, when we saw that scene of them two, like, turning off the communications and, like, head to head, I was thinking, like, yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely something more between these two. And I didn't want to make a prediction saying that they're together. Because if they wasn't, and uh, obviously they're going to be in the show for God knows how many seasons. I've just made such a shit prediction. But uh, yeah, turns out it's true. But yeah, they're a little bit of fun in whatever that place is. I think it's like an air locker or... Uh, yeah, I think it's an air locker or something. Like, no, an air locker. No, it's... um. I don't know, there is a word for it, like an airlock. No, what am I talking about? It's not an airlock, it's an airlock. My God, man. But yeah, in the airlock. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting between Amos and uh, what's it called, Miller, because obviously, yeah, I did go into this episode knowing that Amos and Miller, there'd be loads of conflict between them, because obviously Amos actually killed Miller's best friend. So of course Miller is going to be acting the way he is, and it's completely understandable. And, uh, yeah, Amos is way out of line for the way he's treating and acting towards Miller. I mean, I understand defending yourself, but he literally started choking him like that just for trying to punch him. Like, it's understandable what Miller's going through. And, uh, yeah, I just think Amos, like, Miller literally said, like, he's a 200-pound, 200 um, 200-pound, 200 I think it was an itchy finger or something like it. Uh, no, trigger finger. Trigger, I don't know, but he said, like, he, he has itchy finger when he's on the trigger, on the gun. And that is a loose cannon, which we know Amos is. Amos is a loose cannon. He is, uh, I mean, I, I think that goes back to like episode four or five, whatever. When Amos is just let loose and he does whatever, he is such a loose cannon. And uh, yeah, there's no prediction of what he would do because he's extremely dangerous. He's extremely capable. But yeah, it just pretty much makes him a loose end. And yeah, I do like Amos' as a character. I really do like his character, but he needs to change his attitude with Miller. But of course, we did see that happening. So... I'm glad that Miller's kind of putting this um this thing away, this thing between him and Amos and his best friend. Because obviously, I'm pretty sure there has been a time jump because um Miller has a beard now. Well, not a big beard, but it's, there has been a little bit of a time jump. So Naomi and Holden got together and obviously the stuff with Miller's beard and, and just everything that's happening. So there has been a little bit of a time jump. I'm pretty sure at least maybe a week, maybe a month. But um yeah, uh, there has been time jump. And uh, yeah, now at the ending, we saw Miller and... Oh God, that was, that was such a good scene because we had Miller and Amos pretty much start to share food and like laughing at each other because obviously um, they was talking about how they used to buy this black market cheese and God, it was amazing. And then Miller was like, yeah, I busted that Star Helix. And uh, yeah, the funny thing is the next day, all that cheese disappeared. And uh, yeah, they called a meeting and it was like, where's all the cheese gone? Where's it all gone? And uh, all, everyone everyone could smell the cheese farts. Uh, it's just such a great scene. I love that scene, man. And uh, yeah, I really hope we get more of them types of scene. Them light-hearted, light-hearted, light-hearted uh, emotional scenes where it's just kind of bonding between people. Uh, I feel like in a show like The Expanse, it's really, um, really good to have scenes like that compared to like all the extreme story and dramatic stuff that's happening. Speaking of dramatic, we've obviously got Christian and uh, she went to that guy because uh, obviously she's still pretty much playing her role as like the old woman who won't let go and is uh, ignorant in a way because obviously she knows and it was really obvious in episode 10 that Savadir or I think it's I think it's called Aaron Wright Savadir I think that's his name but that guy and Pierre Mao are obviously behind everything they're behind the uh, the style ships uh, I don't know if they are behind the style ship I did go into that at the start but they're definitely behind well we know they're behind all the bio stuff all the shit that happened on Eros Phoebe all of that crap and all the the weapon, the bio element to it, that is all Pier Mao and Aaron Wright. Them two are the main conspirators. There, may, there might be more that obviously work for them, but them two are behind everything. They're the mastermind. And obviously it completely makes sense that Julie Mao tried to get away from her father. That was the reason. Her father was a maniac. He's a billionaire maniac in power. And he's trying to create this weapon. To, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> We don't know what his purpose is. Um, no, we don't know what his motives are. He could be using that that weapon, that bio weapon. He might he might want to create this bio weapon to kill all the people, to kill maybe Mars, to kill maybe Earth, take over the UN. 
Like, there's an infinite amount of possibilities. And, um, yeah, obviously, he just wants power. He just wants control. And a man like that in that power will stop at nothing. And, obviously, we've seen he's just like a little... Aaron Wright is like a little puppy to this Pierre Mal guy. This Pierre Mal guy is so powerful. And, uh, yeah, I really would not put, put it past my mind that he is the one who's responsible for the, the style ships and the whole thing with the Anubis blowing up the, the Canterbury and the Canterbury... Well, James Holden and the crew getting off the Canterbury, going to the, the Donegar. And then the Donegar being uh, engaged into battle with Pier Mal style ships. I can see that happening because Pier Mal is on Earth. The, the style ships are created on Earth and there's just a massive conspiracy here. Pier Mal is the man behind everything. He is the man... Um, I don't know what the saying is, like the my, the man behind the curtains, I guess. But yeah, he definitely plays a significant role and I really hope soon... We get like an episode going back in time like we did in episode 9. And to find out more about that, I doubt we'll see that. But yeah, Pier Mal is crazy and he has so much power which makes him highly dangerous. And uh, yeah, the, I guess right now he is the main... He, what? He... <laughs> I can't speak, man. But he is the show's main villain right now. That's what he is. And yeah, there's not really a villain or like the good guys are bad guys. But for me, Pier Mal and Aaron Wright are the people who are the bad guys right now. I forgot to mention as well, it's also really interesting because we went back, um, well, no, at the start of the episode, we saw the Mars people. We saw a Mars crew on Mars or like, a, I don't know where it was, but it was on some sort of Martian territory and uh, they was taking out like all these gunships or something. Or maybe it's just an, an exercise. I'm not quite sure. But yeah, they did all this and... Um, Pretty much they saw the prediction. Uh, well, no, it's not prediction. It's like a... Um, uh, what do you call it? Like a, I guess it's like the American dream. Like a hope, pretty much. The Martian people want to create this amazing civilization. Whereby they pretty much have like... Um, I think it's to do with like the atmosphere and the environment. Where they create like a whole civilization on Mars. And again, we see that in the opening sequence. We've seen that Mars and all the tents coming up and all of that type of shit. We've seen that. So it's going to be really interesting to see like later down the line, maybe season three, maybe season four, even season five. It could be later than that. But it's going to be interesting to see if we're going to have like a major time jump, maybe 100 years, maybe 200 years in the future and see like what will happen with the Martian territory. Will it all be built up? And another thing about that is really interesting because they've mentioned time a lot. That They've mentioned the 100 years expedition with the, the UN. It's called like the generation, um, generation, I can't say a word, but the generational expedition. And uh, yeah, so if they were to do a time jump, obviously we'd see what the Martians did, the Mars people and how they developed Mars pretty much. And if they succeeded with the atmosphere and uh, yeah, another thing about the, the expedition, see what they discovered the un so yeah that's that's just a really interesting point i wanted to make but yeah it's also really interesting because we're seeing um the mars people from their perspective like up until this point we've we've only seen like the show and um the story in a way through the the un and uh, like earth luna series eros phoebe that's all we've seen we haven't seen the martian side of it and uh, yeah, introducing this ship is going to be really interesting. And obviously the new characters, that, that woman, I can't exactly remember her name. But it's going to be really interesting now because obviously we've got a completely new perspective on it. We've got Earth, we've got the UN, uh, we've got the Rossinati, but we've also got Mars. And we've got their thoughts, their ideology. And we're going to find out if all the propaganda about you from the UN and Earth, if it's actually true. But yeah, that's, that's going to be really interesting, obviously, to see Mars's perspective on it and the conflict between Earth's perspective and the Mars perspective. But yeah, there's one more thing that I wanted to mention, which was the pro promolecular, promolecular, promolecular uh, study or like the investigation that they was doing. And Naomi was talking about, or I can't, I can't exactly remember who, I think it was Naomi, but they were saying about... Um, no, what am I talking about? It's Dresden, because... Everyone in the Rossinati was watching this video that Dresden made when he went to Phoebe Station. That was a scientist we saw on Phoebe Station, obviously. And the guy was like, we need to get more samples for the biomass. We got we got to introduce a bigger biomass, which, yeah, obviously was errors, which is just complete dick dickheadery from them. That's not a word, but it is now dickheadery, okay. Uh, yeah, so that was obviously Pier Mal and Dresden's doing. Uh, but yeah, Dresden said about a promolecular thing from another universe maybe this is so they i can't i can't exactly remember what he said but maybe this this pro molecular thing this atom this this species 
it's from another universe. Maybe that is the case. And I even predicted that a few, like, at the very start of the show, actually. I said, maybe there's a, another universe at play. Maybe it's an alternate universe. Obviously, it's not an alternate universe, but it's another universe. It's another universe. These species and these, and this pro-molecule, like, species or DNA or whatever the hell this creature is, that is from another universe, 100%, because there's no way that that has been created in the universe where Mars, the UN, they've all advanced the technology. So there's no way that that creature would be able to, like, thrive and survive without them two knowing, these two superpowers knowing. So, yeah, there's definitely something bigger at play. It's either constructed by one of these powers, this man-made thing, uh, which I highly doubt, or the most probable is that it's from another universe, which is highly developed and, uh, yeah, has stuff that we've never seen before. But, yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, this episode was again really good. I can't wait to watch more this uh, this season. Uh, well, the show. I can't wait to watch more season two. I'm really, really hyped for that. Uh, but, yeah, that was my reaction to The Expanse. Season one, episode two. Oh, God, so... <laughs> I've done it again. Season 2, Episode 1. That was my reaction to The Expanse. Season 2, Episode 1. A uh, really great episode. I really did enjoy it. Can't wait to watch more. And uh, yeah, cheers for watching and I'll catch you next one. Goodbye.